Hello and welcome if you are new. My name is Bella and I am a mom of two baby boys. I have Draven who is two and a half and Denver who is nine months old. If you are not familiar with my channel, it was originally made dedicated to document my nine month old Denver's pregnancy, which was quite uneventful. However, when he was born, he was born in a very small hospital that was not equipped to handle his diagnosis, which ended up being neonatal Marfan syndrome. I had no idea that he was going to be born with this. We did have normal ultrasounds, normal testing. I did do the genetic pre-screening at, I believe, 12 weeks just for, um, just because it was offered. And I said, what the heck, why not? And it came back with a statistic of like one in 100,000 that any ge genetic uh, issues would happen in our pregnancy. So I honestly was just going on like everything was normal. I did make a video when he was six weeks old, kind of explaining that. I didn't go into detail what it entails. Um, I was a very small YouTuber. I believe I had 50 subscribers. I was really just using it as a place to kind of go and explain some of my feelings. It was so fresh, so raw. I should have explained a little bit more about it as I have had questions since then. So this is what this video is gonna be dedicated about. I do wanna explain what Denver goes through day to day so you guys have a better understanding of some of the hurdles that he is facing. So he has, like I said, neonatal Marfan syndrome, and there are two different types of Marfan syndrome. There's classical and there's neonatal, which is what Denver has. Both are on the FBN1 gene. They are on different parts of it, so they're called exon and introns, I believe. And the classical is on a different set and the neonatal is on another. Neonatal version is more aggressive, more severe. It is usually diagnosed at birth or shortly after. And Denver was diagnosed physically from day one, but clinically and genetically at around six weeks, which was not a surprise. He does hit almost every, actually every single marker of neonatal Marfan syndrome and a few others. So although the two are very similar with neonatal being more severe, it is often life limiting. Expectancy has been a big question with Denver and we do not know how much time we will have with him. That has been very hard on my heart my husband's heart, on our whole family, on Denver. He is such a happy baby and he is such a fighter. It is insane. He has been through so much and he is so strong and he loves life and he's so smiley. Brings me so much joy. Seeing him happy is pure medicine for my soul. Oftentimes I can forget that he is doing very poor and when I do go to appointments, which have kind of ramped up because surgery is coming up. I get a lot of anxiety, I get stressed, I cry, and I've been crying a lot more lately. So this is just kind of a long kind of spiel about saying like, no time is promised with Denver and we are taking this time to love every single second. We both just want to love up on him as much as we possibly can. We are really hoping that the surgery gives him the best possible chance at life so her biggest goal right now is to just make sure that he gains weight, that he's strong for surgery, and that we are just by his side 100%. So for me to help you guys better understand Denver and what he goes through, I'd like to go through him head to toe. I am going to insert some clips of him because <laughs> there's so many cute ones that I have that I'd love to show you guys. So we're gonna start off with his head. He has a very enlarged head which is one of the reasons that he cannot sit independently. That paired with his low tone is the main reason. We have had an MRI and an ultrasound and it has come back normal, so that is good news, but it is a, a big obstacle for him. We are working with PTOT to get his head strength and his neck strength strong enough so that it is a possibility for him to sit. He does have extreme nearsightedness, nystagmus and possibly dislocated lenses which I kind of discussed in his trying on his first pair of glasses video which you guys should go watch that because he is so so adorable with his new glasses. He does have a high arch palate, has some skeletal abnormalities. He does have scoliosis to some degree. We haven't had it 100% checked over because they want to make sure that his heart surgery is going okay before they even touch his spine so we're gonna wait for that which is unfortunate because i do see his curvature of his spine getting a light worse and quite uncomfortable for him it is on the back burner so and with a lot of these things that i'm going to mention a lot i don't have a lot of information because it is back burnered for now so i'm hoping that he gets closer look on that when he is fully recovered 
He also has severe pectus excavatum, I believe is how it's pronounced. He is getting surgery on that this summer because it is squishing his lungs and squishing his heart. He has twisted arteries in his heart as well as um, severe dilation of his aortic valve. All of his valves are dilated, however his aortic dilation is the worst. Right now it's at a Z score of 10.6, so it's about 2 millimeters a month, which is, which is a very rapid growth rate. That is one of the reasons that surgery is a lot sooner than we first anticipated. He also has regurgitation of all of his valves. They are mild to moderate, so that is a blessing that has not progressed too severe since birth. He has been holding strong on mild to moderate, so we are taking that as a win for him. Our cardiologist is very happy with that. Obviously, you guys have seen that he is home on oxygen, so he does have respiratory issues. He has diaphragmatic eventration, which is explained to us as if his diaphragms are working opposite of each other so he can't take full breaths. His pectus is also squeezing his working lung so that's why um, pectus surgery will happen. And his overall low tone they believe is a big factor to why he needs oxygen. I don't really know. They are honestly kind of stumped on why he 100% needs oxygen because he only is on half a liter. But when we do take him off to do the, the monthly tests, he always dips so we're still home on it. I don't know what the next plan is for that. Again, it is on back burner. So we're kind of in the dark about that. He has beautiful long fingers, so that's part of his condition, as well as his thumbs go in. I don't really know if there's a word or a, a name for that. So we're working with PTOT to try to open them up and that he can reach and grab, and he's doing really, really good. I'll try to insert a video of him playing with his susu and grabbing his susu because he can do that so good. I'm so impressed. You're happy. <laughs> Are you gonna get it in your mouth? Hi, baby. Can I have it? Mm. Hi. Mm. Hi. Mm. Can I have it? No, it's for you. Oh, I can have it. Oh, thank you. Right? Mm. Come right here. Mm. <laughs> Me? Come here. Mm. <laughs> Me? Mm. Come here. <laughs> Mini. You're so cute. But it is hard to get him out of his comfort position. And he also has contractures on his elbows, his knees, and his hips are quite tight. They have gotten a lot better. So I'm going to show you guys what he looked like when he was first born. I really am so impressed with how much he has relaxed and opened up and he's so flexible. So impressed with how much he has progressed since he's been born. We haven't had too much of a look at some of his other organs. I believe his spleen is enlarged. We've only been mentioned it once. I don't really know what that means. No one's really mentioned it yet. He also has, like I was saying, tight knees, low tone. He hasn't really progressed past three months old. I think that's kind of where we're guessing. So we now are on the referral list for a standing frame. So we're supposed to get that in the next five months. That would be amazing. I am so excited for that. I really do want to see him possibly walk one day. That would be my ultimate, ultimate goal. I just would love to see him walk. If there's any way we can make that happen, I would love to try. He also has club feet and we have done some casting to help his feet and his legs. Um, I do believe that it did help quite a bit, but um, he does still have a, like a little bit of a curve to his feet. However, they are a lot straighter. So I feel like I'm going on a tangent and I'm, I'm so not good. I'm not good at public speaking. This feels like public speaking to me. I am very shy. I get really nervous when I'm talking about my kids. I feel very vulnerable and it can be hard to put it out on the internet and know that people can have a say on how things are going. I know that you guys only get to see a little bit of what I get to show you guys, of what I allow you guys to see. I try to be honest with you. I do let you guys know that I have been having a hard time mentally with watching Denver get worse. I'm not gonna pretend that it's all sunshine and rainbows for me because it's really, really hard. <laughs> and I've mentioned that word, I say that word a lot, but hard is the only way I can describe it. I, I wish I was one of those people that I can just take this and, and let it slide for me, but every single day that I get to know him is one more day that I am also sad that I might not have that forever. And I, I battle with myself on that a lot. I am seeing a therapist. We are working through some of those issues with me and I do think it's beneficial. However, I, I do still get really sad, especially on appointment days. 
get really bad anxiety around going to appointments and learning more about kind of upcoming plans and they're preparing me as much as they can. They're gonna start showing me pictures of little babies with heart surgery scars. They're trying to, I guess, desensitize the families to it, but it's like the reality is I'm just gonna be sad no matter what it is, no matter how, how you spin it, it's very disheartening. But I really do think therapy is key. So if you're going through this and you need someone to talk to, I would recommend seeing a therapist. Or if you don't feel comfortable speaking with a therapist, speak with someone that you really do trust and you feel like you can be vulnerable with. I'm lucky that my husband is someone that I do genuinely look for great advice and he is a very big rock through this all and I don't know what I would do if I didn't have him. I will link some more information about neonatal Marfan syndrome below if you want to learn a little bit more about him through that. And I would love for you guys to ask any and all questions. Please don't feel shy, <laughs> but please remember, please try to be nice. We are going through a lot. I only let you guys see a little portion of our life. Obviously, there's a lot that goes behind the scenes, taking care of a baby that has special needs. And I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I am quite sensitive and I just want him to have the best life possible. And I'm doing this for other special needs moms because I feel like this is a very untouched part of YouTube. There is a few amazing YouTubers that have kids with special needs, but I know a vast majority of moms, the silent heroes that aren't in front of a screen. And a lot of them just want to watch someone <laughs> that understands what they're going through. I just wanna thank you guys for watching and learning about Denver. I wanna thank you guys for subscribing. I now have 1600 subscribers, which over the moon about. I know that all of you guys love seeing Denver and Draven. It warms my heart to hear so many amazing comments towards my boys. But I'm going to end this here so awkwardly and I'm probably gonna edit it and put it up tonight or tomorrow. I'm a little mentally exhausted. I feel like I turn on so much trying to explain and but thank you guys for watching and I hope you guys have a lovely rest of your day.